But I'm like, yo, go mentor high school kids or college students for free. Go humble yourself in service. And you're going to find a lot of truths that you will not find in the ego game of, I want to write a book or speak on stage or have a Ted talk or coach people. Welcome to a new episode of Wish I Knew That Before. I'm your host, Amit Pandey. And here we bring on guests from different walks of life to discuss ideas, answer questions that can really help a young adult navigate the journey of life a bit better. Our guest for today's show is the creator of Pursuing Purpose podcast and Mastermind, a guy who has been on a journey to just help and empower others while discovering his truest self. At the age of 19, while studying abroad, he said yes to the offer to organize tours for international college students. That gave him the opportunity to travel to 20 countries, learn about different cultures, socioeconomic problems, volunteer, and work with several non-profits at the grassroots level. That experience changed everything for him. He came back to the US with the purpose to inspire and mentor young adults about life and leadership through his leadership program and taking them on trips around the world. Through his stories, videos, and projects, one common thread that you will notice is that he's never the hero of his stories. It's always the other people. It's always about how he can help others share their stories better through his skills of filming and storytelling. In the past 13 years, he has worked with hundreds of organizations in over 60 countries and countless students and young adults. So please join me in welcoming the man who is on the mission to see what happens when you give it all away. The one with the biggest heart and even bigger smile. Mentor to many, mentee of life, the storyteller, the filmmaker, the traveler with a purpose and a new dad. BC Sana, everyone. Woo! What's up, BC? What's up? Not much. Good to have you here. Welcome to Denver, Colorado, and welcome to Thank your you. first in-person podcast. First in-person podcast. That's exciting. What number episode is this? This is like my um, in recording for the second season. This is like my fourth episode that I'm doing with a guest. Total. Yeah. No total. This would be eleven. Amazing. Yeah, the eleven podcast. Congrats. That I'm doing. And like every podcast that I do, um, I go with an intention that I I just like want to make it very intentional and not just like reach out to anyone. Hey, will you be on my podcast? And you were there on my mind from long, long time. Wow. Long, long time. I was just referring to my notes from October or uh, I think in 2021, like mid of 2021. And I was like, who would be my dream guest? Let, let me prepare the list. And you were one, one of them. So I'm super duper happy that this is happening today. In person. Yeah, let's do it. So exciting. <laughs> Something that, um, like what I, what I mentioned in the introduction as well, that I noticed like throughout your journey, what has been the most interesting th- thing to see is like how big has been traveling for you and the lessons that you learned through your traveling. As I said, you travel with a purpose, right? Can you talk to me about, you went to these countries, you went to Uganda, you went to Kenya, Thailand, and India. India. (laughs) You went to India. Yeah. Yeah. So you went to all of these places, you sure had a good experience over there or something happened, but you kept going back. It wasn't that it was just one off trip and you never went back. You kept going back. What made you go back there? To all these countries or just traveling in general? Just traveling with the purpose and going back to these countries with some context around how your travel experience was. Yeah. So I got really lucky when I was 19. Um, I never left the country. I never understood cultures or like, I didn't really know, you know, too much. Um, Typical American bubble. And got really lucky when I was 19 to do a study abroad program. Um, So that was the first invitation um, and experience I had traveling, went to Mexico and then went to Thailand and and it was with a hundred students from 30 different countries. So it was with international students. So uh, my first roommate I ever had was Nepalese actually and me and him were roommates for a month. So that was fun. And then, yeah, for me, it was just like this uh, black and white life. You know, America is really beautiful and incredible. It just, there's not too much historical culture Mm -hmm. and, um, in certain, you know, aspects. So I, yeah, I went to Thailand and was just blown away by the, the colors, the, the traditions, the history, the, uh, 
the, yeah, just everything about it. Yeah. And that was my first taste. And, and then it was kind of just the open doors of like, whoa, there's 200 other places that are new and exciting and uh, new languages and currencies and ideas and histories. And so, yeah, I kind of went from there to being just the door gates wide open and just started traveling nonstop with the same organization I was traveling with. Um, I became, they hired me yeah, and then picked up a camera halfway through that. Um, and taught myself photo and video and then that gave me a vehicle to travel the world some more so yeah man it's been a long 14 year journey it's crazy years, yeah. yeah one thing that i mentioned in the introduction that you picked up the camera what made you to not be the hero of your stories you recorded you helped so many organizations across the world through just like filming for their nonprofit. what made you well, I think for me, so I, this, this organization I was traveling with, we would work with nonprofits everywhere we went yeah. and I would sit in Thailand, the Philippines, India, all these places. And I would meet all these on the ground organizations and I'd hear their stories, how they started, why they started, what their mission is. And I was feeling so inspired and like healed by it. Cause I was like, man, the world, like it's so good. People are doing so much good in it. And, you know, I would text my mom or my yeah. dad and I'd be like, yo, there's this nonprofit. They work with street kids in the Philippines. Yeah. They're so amazing. They help give like education and clean water. And the emotions I, were fe I was feeling, I kind of was like, man, I wish more people could feel this. And at that time there wasn't, I mean, YouTube was around, but you typed in inspiration or purpose or nonprofits in YouTube and nothing came up. Yeah. And so, yeah, for me, it was kind of like, uh, I just started telling stories that I was hearing. Yeah. Um, and hoping my friends back home would be inspired like I was. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I kind of started that way. Um, yeah. and yeah, one story after the next, I, my heart would just, I felt my heart growing of hope and change. Yeah. And, uh, I wanted everyone to feel that and they couldn't travel. So some of my friends, my mom, my dad, my friends yeah. back home, yeah. I went to high school and college with, they weren't able to travel at that time. So I was like, well, let me be, I'm, maybe I'm the bridge between the Philippines and my family back home. Yeah. Um, so that's how it started before there yeah. was really, I mean, Instagram wasn't even around then yeah. smartphones weren't around then. So, yeah. 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 Like one thing, what, so what I noticed throughout all your videos, whenever, whenever I was like researching you and coming up with things that, Oh, what can I ask you? When like, there was this video around going and giving roses to seniors on Valentine's day, uh, or just like dancing and like organizing fashion show for for the kids in i don't know like kenya or uganda some place that you did and it was it was so fulfilling mm -hmm. like at one point there was this video where a kid took your camera and it's like just like holding it yeah <laughs> there was those 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 moments like as a viewer i just said like i know i would i never went to those places you know um but through that lens that you recorded and edited, I could feel the happiness. And one thing that came up for me is we are not different. Like even though we come from different places, we have different cultures, but we are not that different, mm. you know. Um, and like you coming back with all those lessons and revelations and just sharing it with even though I'm from India and I've seen a lot of like I, I grew up in a slum in India um, and I could relate to a lot of things that you would show with the kids in Africa uh, but even for me I was like this makes my heart so freaking happy wow that's so sick <laughs> so definitely your work is impacting everyone I would say um, do you remember any any beautiful heart touching story that you experienced over there, maybe a local shared it with you or a moment that comes up when I mention. Yeah, there's been a lot. And yeah, I think like you said, there's just such um, beautiful and the human experience and yeah. in whole, you know, I, I got to live with like different religions and backgrounds and beliefs and coming from America, you know, it's, there, it's very kind of like one sided yeah. sometimes. And so, yeah, it opened up my whole world to the human experience. Um, and then the moment, you know, there were so many moments, but I say one of the first moments was my host family in the Philippines when I was 19, um, was in the slums and they had like this little kind of like two bedroom, like little space, but they had four kids and just the mom, it was a single mom. Mm. And they hosted me in these, the slums area where the water would, you know, flood and, yeah. and all that. And so I remember just being like, yo, what, 
you know, why did you host me? And, um, what was, you know, your thought process behind this? And, uh, and she was like, why well, my kids might not ever be able to travel the world. So I thought I can bring the world into my house. And so they, I mean, we ate rice only some nights, like it was really tough. Like we only had, you know, the bucket showers and, you know, not so much toilet paper sometimes. So it was really, you know, the real, and for me being 19 American kid, I was like, Whoa, this is really hard, but it came from a frequency of gratitude because these people could barely feed the four kids and they were like giving me some of their rice. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was just a huge eye opening experience for me being like, wow, like there's so many people in America, at least with so much that wouldn't, you know, open up it's scarcity mindset here. And yeah, some of these developing countries, um, they're just, happy. And, you know, you are a great example. You know, you, you function and operate from a great, grateful, ex, uh, you know, expression. Cause you're yeah. so grateful because you know, what on the other side of the coin is and how lucky you is that you kind of were able to get out of India to get education and network and meet people. And so, and see the world. Yeah. And so your whole frequency is just gratitude in every conversation, every experience. Um, and that's just something beautiful. And so I had to reprogram my mind in that kind of mentality too, of not comparison, not scarcity, but abundance. And that there's a, uh, uh, and they've done studies on this. The ha- Did you watch the happy documentary? Uh, not yet. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. They found studies that the, yeah, there's, there's, and it was done in India and all around the world for five years, but there was like a man in India that lives in a slum is just as happy as most Americans. Mm. And it was like, and they interviewed these, these, these areas in India that were like slums considered slums and, and then families in America for five years. And they found out like, wow, these, these people that live in slums in India are just as happy as Americans, if not happier. Yeah. Um, with very little, you yeah, know, yeah. so I, I felt the same way, honestly, like when I say that I, I was born and brought up in a slum, but it wasn't that I was unhappy, unhappy because that was my reality. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I was very happy with what I had over there. And even after coming to US, I wasn't like, oh, I missed out on these many things. Like my life was shit and this and that. As you said, I was so grateful mm. in operating just from that aspect like I come from I came from this place I see it and now I'm here life is, life is yeah awesome yeah right <laughs> and so yeah that's the way to go of just yeah. that's how you kind of yeah. perceive things is not like oh man I didn't have this growing up it's oh now I have this now and yeah. Yeah. that's good can you can you give a blurb about um, it, it has come a lot in our so uh, I'm also in BC's mastermind pursuing purpose yeah there you go yeah and uh, that's how we have come to be very close in, in terms of like just listening to his insights and things and, and in that that mastermind we had this um, concept called hero's journey the Joseph Campbell's hero's journey can you give a little blurb about people who don't know let's say yeah the hero's journey is you might have heard it if you know you watch movies or really into movies but Joseph Campbell was like this mythological philosopher who traveled the world and studied stories from Japan to Brazil all around the world. And he was like, whoa, there's one common thread that these traditions have passed down for thousands of years in their storytelling. And like people from Japan thousands of years ago probably didn't go to Brazil and vice versa. And so, but he found out all these threads have similar stories and it's called the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. And it's this whole circular experience um, that most movies now from Star Wars, Wizard of Oz, Matrix, um, Batman, all of them as this hero's journey story where there's this, you know, initiation part where your parents die or something happens. And and every movie is based around it that we love um, because it is this universal symbolic connection to all of us are on our own hero's journey. And um, we all are the hero of our own journeys. and, And we're on this story, you know, to to find heartbreak and failure and like these, you know, these struggles and we fight through them because we're strong. And so, yeah, it's an incredible. Yeah. Yeah. And then one of the aspects of hero's journey is coming back home, Mm. coming back home, going through all those trials and tribulations. And now you, something has changed within you. And there is also this desire to come back and share. And that's what I saw in your journey, like your hero's journey. You came back to U.S., a lot of people would have been like, yeah, I don't care, whatever. You're like, no, I want to come back to US and I want to share this, what I learned through my traveling experience. You came back to US and you started to mentor a lot of young adults over here. One thing I think you shared it in one of your interviews or um, somewhere I read, you said to one of the one of the high schoolers that, and I want to quote you there, the battle within 
will always be greater than the battle around. What do you mean by that? And what are the battles that these guys face that you have come across? Yeah, um, totally. That's been a huge part of my initiation is coming back home. And, and, and I really didn't even want to. It was really like I felt for me at that time, God being like, yo, go back to the U.S. and work with as many young people. Because no one told me when I was 17 about purpose or passion or trauma or anything like that. And so when I was 22 or 23, I sat and asked myself, like I was in Mexico and I remember just journaling for like a couple of weeks and I was like praying. I was like, all right, what's the biggest need in the world? And I want to go do it. And I was like, is it water in Africa? Is it orphans in Asia? And I wrote down all these things and I was in prayer and meditation and that, and God just made it really clear to me at that time. He was like the biggest need in the entire world is young people of America to waken up. And I was like, Oh, that's cool. I'm definitely not moving back to the U S though. And, and, but there was this conviction on my heart. God was like, no, go because, and I just, no one told me when I was a kid. And so God was like, yo, go back home and be the person you wish you had. And at every, you know, I was 22 years old traveling the world this dream job. And I left it. I quit it. My dream job that I could have done forever and moved back to my parents' basement at the time yeah. with the only information of work with young people. Mm. So started working with high school kids and um, mentoring them, finding programs I can mentor in. And then, yeah, just learned more about the inner heart and the inner story and the inner passions and purpose of um, the only you know world we can control is the one inside of ourselves, you know, and the only one we can change. And so, yeah, just really started letting these high school kids know. I started working with a lot of inner city urban youth um, in Denver and, uh, man, that was like a whole, I mean, that's a whole other, you know, season and chapter of my life, but yeah, just continue, you know, reminding these guys like, yo, I can't change certain things in your scenarios or situations, but man, we can really like change the inner world, you know, that was created by the outer world. And now let's get a chance to recreate your inner world. And so the outer world will be more harmony and beautiful and peaceful. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that's where I kind of where I was coming with that, but yeah. 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 No, like uh, so. So, what are um, what are some of the battles that you came across? Like you have, you have mentored so many, and I've seen. Is it is it Luke that you? Um, what's the guy that you mentor right now? Bruce, the little Bruce. one. Oh yeah, yeah Bruce, yeah, the little one. Yeah. yeah. There's Rome as well. Rome, who, yeah. Which you who who you're helping, and there are countless other young adults that you have helped. What do you think are some of the most common challenges that that you you see that I see a pattern. I see that there is some commonality that a lot of these youngsters are facing. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's some similarities that, you know, through every human, you know, every story that humans going through, wh whether it's like, am I worthy enough? Am I lovable enough? Am I, uh, am I good enough? You know, all these different things, this value place where our culture and society has created a, um, you know, a system in place that makes us feel us less than. And so we do consume more um, and we do live in a scarcity, fear-based mindset. But yeah, I don't know. For me, it's always been that journey of like, I was, I mean, my whole purpose is birthed from growing up, never feeling loved, heard or seen or encouraged. And so when I, you know, felt like I, I was bullied in high school and, and in college and Oh, you know, would get anxious in events or I never really went to any parties in high school or college, but yeah. I just didn't really fit in. And so, yeah, for my own journey, I was like, man, it felt like shit not fitting in. It sucked and it felt lonely and scary and like, just like abandoned. Like you felt like almost like an orphan internally. And so for me, when I realized the world's much bigger than my high school or my, even my little town, I grew up in my suburb. I wanted, you know, so many students and young people to feel like they can understand that, um, and give them a taste of traveling without, you know, some, and I did take some, I did take a lot of high school kids around the world, like hundreds. Yeah. Um, and that was one of my missions when I came back was like, can I take high school kids around the world? Cause no one ever took me around the world. So I ended up taking hundreds of high school kids around the world. But, um, but more importantly, it was the journey that we were on when we were traveling to of understanding these truths and these, uh, healing moments of realizations of that we're more than enough yeah. and that we have a gift of just who we are without anything attached to it. Um, there's no letter jacket with pins. I'm on the track team or football team or in the musical. It's, it's like no identity based. It's very much you're enough just cause you are you based, you know? Yeah. One thing that I, I have seen is that a lot of times when you, when you preach something, you know, when you, when you preach that, Hey, you should live your life like this. Oh, you should do it. Something like this. A lot of times it doesn't hit when you actually allow someone to be 
and meet them where they are at and not like hey you should be here come here come here and i think that's what i saw in your um even in this mastermind as well one of the things that makes it special is that mentors are so relatable they you guys are not sitting on a high chair somewhere saying like you know what get up take a cold shower go journal do this do that no it's like i see i i hear you i might not have all the answers but i'm here to have a discussion i am here to make you feel heard and in that aspect itself just like taking these youngsters on this journey of just traveling you know like a lot of times you don't even need to tell them that hey this is what you should be thinking of or this is what you should do a lot of a lot of things stick when it's it comes from internally you know you say something you tell me to do it i might not do it you know but when i am sitting back somewhere and i actually see it coming through i'm like oh i see it now now it's internalized you know so i think i think that's that's such a beautiful mission that you are on and i know it's a lifelong mission to just like keep serving and keep helping the young adults because honestly i feel as as you said like a lot of young adults if as you said like a lot of the battle is from within and if we can just provide them tools be at their disposal i think they are smart enough to figure it out mm. you know when we are there to just like hey i'm here yeah why i'm here yeah. any 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 fun activities that comes to your mind that you do with these youngsters <laughs> well, i mean to go back so, to kind of what you shared yeah you can't be what you can't see mm. you know and i always go back to that like you can't be what you can't see and so you know anyone can teach or preach or you know share certain things or share how to live a life um very few can pave the path and do it authentically you know and so that's what it came down to me too is like man i could sit here all day because i know something because i learned about traveling or i learned about anything um and i could just tell people you know or i was like or i could just continue to lead the way by experience and example that way i'm not forcing anyone to the well they're coming when they're ready because they're thirsty you know yeah. and so it's like i i stopped trying to push that boulder up hill for so long um trying to prove myself or trying to you know validate that i'm smart enough or that i know enough and it came down to like yo just stay in your lane stay humble and stay authentic continue to serve and fail and learn what's right and wrong and you know be as human as possible and not above it or fake that you're above it and um, yeah just con- and that's what you learn a lot with mentoring for free high school kids like so many coaches nowadays they want to come in and they want to be like oh i've had a lot of experience in life yeah. and i'm going to be a coach i'm going to charge a lot of money cuz i my my time is valuable or my knowledge is my wisdom is valuable and i'm like yo chill that's cool i'm excited that you want to help people and that you want to speak on stages or write books but i'm like yo go mentor high school kids or college students for free go humble yourself in service and you're going to find a lot of truths that you will not find in the ego game of I want to write a book or speak on stage or have a TED talk or coach people um that's coming from a it's it, and like I said they do want to help people at the end of the day but it's with this like kind of chip on their shoulder of like I'm going to charge for it and I'm going to and I'm going to change lives cuz my story is powerful not cuz I love and I want to listen and hear so yeah I just was constantly humbled with my high school kids um for the you know that decade and uh yeah just constantly was like oh man i got to i got to live it yeah and that's most important cuz i hated religion and i hated preachers and yeah. just didn't i didn't vibe well with people that just spoke a lot and then they you know would have this million dollar house and or, you know that's not a bad thing but like <laughs> they thing, they lived yeah, in yeah. certain different lights yeah, and yeah. so for me i was like man i just want to i want to um I want to be authentic that when someone asks me something about my life I'm like real, you know, and I'm I'm here for the people and um and for God at the end of the day, you know. So yeah. and, and 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 just like speaking a lot and not providing the platform to actually like listen. Like you know, a lot of people just like speak 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 but they are not ready to listen. Yeah. Um and that's where I think you guys are shifting the game. You are like, "No, we are here to listen." I think all of us know what to do. A lot of us know like we we know that we shouldn't do this. We yeah. should we shouldn't do this. You know, and you're like I'm here to just listen so that you sort it through. I might I might provide you some prompts, some healthy prompts to actually like think about and you will find your answer. You have it within you. You are just not sitting down to actually allow that 
feeling to come up to actually mm. feel that pain and that is beautiful because it's like it feels like i am doing the work and sometimes it it can be like oh but like i you are supposed to be the mentor and like it feels like i am doing the work but i think it is really cool that i it is coming up for a lot of us i feel like that that i am doing the work and these guys are there to just like help me support me and if i have questions i can go reach reach, reach out to there and yeah. that's a beautiful beautiful environment to grow because now the work that i'm doing it it stays it becomes a muscle memory yeah. it's like it's coming from within i'm doing the work so that has been the fun part of just being in this mastermind and also the community aspect of it let's talk about that let's talk about that you have mentioned somewhere that you value relationships more over experiences right what do you mean by that and how relationships have changed the trajectory of your life let's talk about that yeah um for sure yeah community and relationships have been like the foundation of all of this you know and so it came down to um you know not fitting in at school not fitting in at church not fitting in in all these clubs and one day it was just like man i guess if i can't fit in anywhere then i should probably just create something new and see if a couple other people feel the same way yeah. and when that started it was also very humbling but it was just was kind of like in you know it was great it was like super even if it was five people you know i was doing like a documentary movie night at my house at the time when i was 23 24 living in denver and uh would just show documentaries and five people came then 10 then 15 and you know 20 and it kept building but yeah relationships um i think they in our culture and society talk a lot about you know isolation and becoming like your own man or your own woman or independent and that's where your strength and your validation comes from but in reality community and relationships is where we get our become our strongest you know and really get to see our reflection of who we are and our growth you know of like checking that um you know just we're we're almost a body you know and and kind of looking at it is like you know Jess and Janelle and Mitch were so different yeah. and yet we all make each other stronger and better yeah. and you know like my left hand is never going to be mad at my right hand for messing yeah. up it's going to be like yo thank you so much for doing what i can't do you know yeah. and so it's always trying to look at that like i always say how you anyone can accomplish their passion by themselves i can become a photographer or a musician or yeah. whatever i want by myself but god made it so you can never accomplish your purpose by yourself mm. because your purpose cannot be a, tied around your ego it can't be like i've done this i've changed these many lives it's so humbling to where anyone compliments you on your purpose all you can literally do is point to your team and your family your tribe and like someone's like oh my god this is so amazing i'm like yeah well my team's amazing and like i can't take credit for any of it you know because i'm so like i can't believe i have a team that i have you know and um people that support it like they have and so yeah your purpose is extremely humbling and vulnerable because you have to learn how to ask in my passion i can just you know pay for help or get yeah. you know i can google how to take photography videos or whatever you know take pictures but in your in your purpose you have to actually ask for help you have to practice vulnerability mm -hmm. you you have to be authentic and um yeah it's really it's way harder your your purpose is way harder than your passion it's way harder yeah let's talk about that what what do you really mean by pursuing purpose now you have a brand around it now you have that core message that you have finally like put it in two words pursuing purpose let's talk about that well i think it's always evolving you yeah. know like yeah. i definitely um you know we're always trying to stay on the outskirts of the humbleness of like yeah what does it mean to pursue purpose and where did that term or that idea come from but we know the pursuit of happiness it's like it's in the constitution and like yeah. you know we all have the right to pursue happiness and a lot of us are pursuing um kind of our own yeah passions and goals which is great you know but i kind of look at it as a lot of people are trying to build castles mm. and in pursuing purpose we're trying to build kingdoms uh, you know and uh what, what do you mean by that like so it's kingdoms. i think sometimes it's easy to build a castle with our passion or ourself where we have like our safety and it's all about our life and we're looking out for ourselves and you know it's kind of this whole but then you look at this huge castle you built with this money or this fame or success or just security you have, you know you live alone or whatever it is and you're like wow this castle is big it's just kind of lonely you know and it's just like i've worked really hard so it's my it's my money i worked yeah. really hard for this and when you build a kingdom it's it's this like you know even distributed community that's way harder sometimes 
to live in because you, you know, you, you're, it's nothing is mine. It's, you know, it's kind of this shared unity, this conscious unity of connection. And, uh, I think that's the way our world is going. I think we've seen the other side of the spectrum of like this castle building has led to the most, we're the most depressed country, mm-hmm. suicidal country in the world right now. Mm-hmm. And because we built a lot of castles and uh, very little kingdoms, you know, communities. And so now we're learning how to go back to these ancient ritual tribal understandings of like, whoa, like we are stronger together and um, we're happier together. Um, And it's scarier. Uh, It's scarier to, yeah, it's scary to invite like my (laughs) shadows or my darkness or my struggles or my pride or gluttony or anger or shame or fear into a community of people. It's terrifying because we think as Americans that if you have any of that, you're, you're, you're the black duck or whatever, you know, you're like the odd one out. And then you realize the truth of like, oh, wow, everyone has this. And now we just get to carry this weight together. And I spent my whole life carrying shame and guilt and fear and anxiety and jealousy. I was carrying all this weight and I was like, okay, if I get richer, if I get stronger, if I get better looking, if I get nicer clothes, I can carry this weight better. And we've known now that that none of that helps carry the weight. And the literally the only thing that helps carry that weight is distributing it. And so taking that stuff, you know, my shame out of my backpack and be like, hey, can you guys help me carry this? Because it's fucking heavy. Someone is like, yeah, I, when I share that, like when I have that shame, let's let's actually like distribute it. It reminds me of um, Adam's. Um, so Adam, Adam Baka is a mentor in the group and he, he uh, leads a men's circle where he takes them on a retreat and um, he tells them that go find the most juiciest, heaviest watermelon that you can get. And people are like, oh, it's going to be awesome. We are going to have an amazing watermelon to eat. And then next day in the morning, he's like, go bring that. And then he tells them to carry it on, I don't know, maybe like 14 mile hike or seven mile. I don't remember, but he tells them to carry it. Now, your ego, at one point, it will be like, yeah, I can't do that. I'll carry it. I'm like strong and this and that. But as the time progresses, your bicep starts to wear down. Your ego is like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> and then you're like, you know what? I think I need help. I need help. And then you give that watermelon to someone else. And then throughout that mile to like, the watermelon can come back to you. Someone can else can hold it for you. And, and that's what it is. Like sharing the weight. When you're building kingdom, you have to share the weight. Because all of us, can enjoy that watermelon at one point of time. But if you don't like really carry, we'll be like, hey, you didn't carry it. Why should yeah. I give it to you? Or you'll be oh. jealous. That guy has a bigger watermelon. Yeah. And you're like, oh shit, he's got to carry that up the hill. Now I'm not jealous anymore. And so, yeah, it's all about, um, exactly. That's great. Carry each other's watermelons. That's what we are talking about. Yeah, there you go. That's <laughs> one way. Um, yeah. I mean, that is, that is what I saw in this um, mastermind as well. Like, the short, the short. So we have like a uh, long calls on Sunday and short calls on Wednesdays, um, and the short calls. I f- I'm in Colorado right now. I uh, I flew to Colorado just for the weekend because I felt I felt so connected to each and every one, um, and I was like, I will feel incomplete if I leave to France without coming here and actually just. Giving a hug. That's it. That that was my whole idea of coming over here. And that's that's what, you know, what I think I think a lot of your work or the mentor's work is not to like go and give us the answers to all our questions. I think the biggest work that you have done is bring intentionality into this program. The way you have structured every week, the documentary that we are watching. And the biggest thing is bringing and heart-led intentional community. Mm. And that, I think, is the USB of this mastermind. And I feel so love and so much connected. And I was like, BC, this is not done. I'm leaving US and now uh, I'm getting introduced to a community like this. Or that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that, that's what came up for me uh, around community and the way I feel for the Pursuing Purpose community. And I feel belong. I feel heard. I feel respected. One of the common threads that I have seen along the community lines that you have always mentioned is that you help. You go out. Even if, let's say, you have little, you try to share it. How do you manage to take so many leaps of faith? Throughout your journey, I've seen you talk about 
living your life through the van, not having money to pay your rent, and someone coming through, or you had a little bit of it and you just gave it to someone, and community pulling through. How are you able to take so many leaps of faith? Yeah, um, yeah, that's been a long journey, and it's it's constantly just been kind of experiments. Like you can't lead anyone where you haven't gone. And so I can't tell people to quit their job or take the leap of faith or take a risk moving across the world or across the country or, you know, whatever it is. And so for me, it was constantly just pushing the threshold, you know, like as you're, as you push little leaps of faith, you kind of go, oh shit, like I can just keep pushing the threshold. And for me, it was ultimately like, um, many ego deaths, you know, yeah. where it's like, I, no one understood me. No one believed in the idea what I was going towards. People really frowned upon it. And, and I was kind of like, but I, I mean, I guess like, I can't really explain it, but I felt like God for me was like, yo, you got this, like keep going. It was like this internal heart piece where it's like, wait, you have no money and you have nowhere to sleep or eat tonight. And I was, and there was something about me that was like, I'm going to be okay. I don't know why. Um, so I would go in Denver, at least I, when I was living out of my car, I would go volunteer at the rescue mission, the homeless shelters. And then I would like, they would offer me food because you get like, when you're a volunteer, you get to eat too. So I would just eat there after volunteering. And so, you know, it was very much like very humbling and very, uh, just the ultimate, I don't know, just like this idea of like, man, what happens when you push to the ultimate failure? Like, you know, of like what, what is on the other side of that? And, um, it was always a safety net, you know, kind of on some level, like, yeah, I guess you could say living out of my car, being hungry is like, there is no net anymore. You're like, oh damn, you're like now fallen and hit the ground. Uh, but for me, I was kind of like just trying to work through it of like what this storm can't last forever. And I feel like what the track I'm on, the journey I'm on, it wasn't naive. It wasn't, um, it was illogical for sure. Um, but it was very much like, I know the direction I'm going. My compass is pointing towards something bigger than myself. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to stay on course no matter what storm comes. Mm -hmm. So different storms came, whether I like, you know, my dad passed away. I lost my house that I was living in. That's when I started living out of my car. And I knew the compass was still going. I had moments of affirmation. I was like, okay, this storm is bad but there's compass. I can see where it's going and no one else can see it, but me. And like I said, there was, and then there's a spiritual side of like, yeah, God, just like having this peace within me of like, stay true, stay on course. Cause at any moment I could pick up a phone and I could get a job traveling the world. Yeah. I could get a job. Like at any moment I could call someone and get a really good job. Um, and I could call these study abroad programs I worked for and say, Hey, I want to travel the world again, take me back. And they're like, all right, cool. So I always knew that the, that was a backup parachute plan. Um, but I kind of wanted to follow the thread of like ultimate ego death where I was like the most lonely broke I could ever be because it gave me wounds and scars where I could share to other people someday that might need that kind of motivation. That's like, it's okay to be 25 living out of your car broke and not knowing where you're going and no one believes and understands you. Cause I've been there and I came through it, you know? And so, yeah, that was my whole mission of like, I think I put it on, on one of my quotes where I was like, I'm on a. I'm on an experiment to see what happens when you give it all away. And I understand the idea and the concept that you can't pour from an empty cup. That's become really popular recently where it's like, you can't pour from an empty cup. You can't serve others if you're not serving yourself, which I agree with. And I believe there is something to be said when you sometimes pour from an empty cup is what fills your cup. And so it's like, yeah, your cup might be empty, but that sometimes I could see as an excuse of like, listen, because you, at the end of the day, where you're trying to, you're like, I'm trying to find money, my money. I'm trying to find my lover, like my husband, my wife. I'm trying to find my health, my my muscles, my car. I'm trying to find all. And then when I get my shit together, I'll go help people. I'll go donate. I'll go spend time serving and volunteering. And it's just not how it works. Like there's no way ever, all that shit's ever going to be together. And so I kind of was like trying to always just challenge people and invite people into like, Hey, like I know you don't have your husband or wife yet or your job or your money or whatever it is, but can you donate and like volunteer and support even though you don't have all your shit together? And, and then the crazy thing that happens, what I've seen for over a decade is shit starts to come together when you start to serve and you start to donate and you start to think about someone beyond yourself because at that moment we're in fight or flight mode because our culture and society said you got to find your partner your wife your career your job your car that's the goal yeah. and that once again has led to a depressed suicidal country yeah. 
Um, and I think that the pursuing purpose concept comes from when you are in service and in love and support for other humans, as you look at them as yourself, your knobs kind of like on a radio, you know, get yeah. their, your anxiety, your depression, your fear, all gets your jealousy, your, you know, you start to get turned down and you're like, how can I be jealous? This guy has a nice car than me when I'm just like helping this dude who has no family or car. Yeah. And so you start to just drown out all the noise of what our society thrives on is our weakness. Um, and when you're really helping and serving people, you don't really care what car you're driving or like what, you know, cause you have meaning and fulfillment yeah. Yeah. and the person with a nice car is probably kind of like stressed and anxious and, yeah. you know, depressed cause they don't have fulfillment. And so anyway, yeah, yeah. I guess that's like part of the journey. Um, yeah. so no, I think I think you you said it very well about it's 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 like a healthy balance of everything, you know, and in in nature as well. No season lasts forever. It goes through different we all go through different season. Maybe we don't have a lot of things right now, but can we in this season like help? You don't need to always be like just pouring air, like you you have your cup empty and you still like throughout the year you're just struggling and like going through this phase. You can find some time to actually be like, you know what, I'm going to go and probably actually like try to like the Maslow's hierarchy, maybe take care of a bit for me and come back. Not like figure out everything. Once I have everything, once I have everything sorted, only then I will go help. Yeah. My mom always tells me this, that um, even though you're earning well today, but even if you weren't, I would still tell you to uh, like donate a little bit. You know, you'll be like, no, but I, I, I don't earn this much. But from whatever you earn, can you donate a little bit? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I can. Yeah. And she's like, then just do it. And my dad always does that. He's like, never in India as well. If someone comes to your home, never send them back like empty stomach. Like, mm. feed them. Yeah. Hospitality is a big thing in India, and I think that's what um, I realized in my journey as well. Like. If I wait that someday I would earn like 500k and then I'm going to give a big donation check. I don't think so that's going to happen. Yeah. But if I can just start today, just a little bit, a little bit. It, it doesn't need to be like I'm giving out everything, or giving everything away. But can I start a little bit and actually think about how I can serve from that that whatever I have and that has brought a huge, huge joy. Like seeing seeing pictures of a kid that I'm sponsoring in Indonesia. Oh my God, it melts my heart. Yeah, right? <laughs> it melts my heart. Like, you know, they say he's like this year old, this is happening, this and that. It's just, it's a beautiful cathartic experience. Yeah, I mean, it's really at the end of the day, it's in our DNA of why we're, why we're here on earth, right? Is to serve and help people. And that's kind of like what makes our soul come alive and our heart come alive. And that's why we have so many mirror neurons in our body that we can see a story like that on a television or YouTube and cry. Mm -hmm. And you know, the feeling of buying your first car feels great. Like you yeah. save the money, you paid for it, you bought your first car, but the feeling of giving away a car, it will always be a hundred times more. You'll be like, Oh my God. And that's kind of where I got the bug where I, you know, had certain successes in my life. But man, when I helped someone when I was 19, it was an addiction. I was like, Oh my God, I just want to help as many people as possible. And so it's like, when you give away a car, you're just like, and this person, you know, his life changed, they're crying, their family, everything's impactful on their life. And you go, Whoa, that felt way better than when I bought my first car and, or my second car, whatever car. And then your whole life is like, man, I want everyone. I just want to bless people. I just want to serve people and love people and help people. And at the core of who we are, when you break it down with fulfillment and meaning, um, it's, it's really our, uh, reason we're here. And so, um, yeah, sponsoring someone or helping someone, man, it's, or giving away money. It's like you literally cry giving away money, you know, more than you, you never, you didn't cry making the money. Oh, um, not, not sure. yeah, you know, and so <laughs> maybe, it's like maybe late night in the office. In the <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's definitely, that's when we taste it, you know, the first time in our life, maybe we were like, Whoa, this felt so different. And then, you know, and, and you see it with like these relationships we built in the mastermind of like, whoa, I've known these people for four weeks and like their family, I haven't even touched them in person. Yeah. And that's like the whole, you know, frequency and culture we're trying to base this off of is like when, when you're safe again, you know, when you're not in fight or flight survival mode, um, and you, you actually 
are opposite of jealous. You're encouraging people's breakthroughs and transformation and healing, you know? You're happy in their happiness. And yeah, it's wild. It's wild. Vizhi, before I ask my last question, yeah. where can people find you and connect with you? My address? Yeah, like where can people find you? <laughs> my Instagram. home address? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, home address. Please uh, come in, drop at like night Denver, time. Yeah, um, <laughs> my, yeah, you can find me at BC, like the alphabet, um, Cerna on anything. Uh, yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Any any latest projects that you're working on that you want to share? Um, not so much. I yeah, the mastermind is is something I created out of a space of I spent my whole twenties without a mentor or community or curriculum to understand who I was and this world and this life. And the community part was probably the biggest. Um, and so I built a program when I was thirty that kind of helped that version of myself. Right. And it's called pursuing, or it's called the mentorship mastermind. And it is a, uh, we're on our third one year in it. And, uh, it's, yeah, with this third one, we have 56 people from 10 countries, which is wild. Our first one, we had 25 people. Um, it was mostly, it was all Americans. Our second one, we had 50 people from like seven or eight countries. And it's our third one. So we're going to be launching another fourth one here soon. And, and it's really just beautiful as you know, people continue to find community, um, that really get them that there's no, um, comparison or uh, jealousy or like a lack and it's all out of abundance where we're all and when you create that space that container i mean people in our programs you've heard it they're like I, they're like i've shared stuff in this program oh, that i've never shared with anyone i've shared it yeah too. and so <laughs> you know that's that's a gift that we're able to do that through a user interface like yeah of course i like hugging and dancing in person and retreats but right now there's people from 10 countries 56 people all around the country all around the world that don't get that opportunity to go to a retreat. So this is, um, and for me, I like this program more because it goes deeper. Yeah. Then retreats are beautiful and incredible and life-changing, but this program is like, it goes, you know, eight weeks. So it's it's the real deal. It's the real deal. So it's, we'll be doing another one of those here soon. Yeah. 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 Cool, cool, cool. So watch out for that. Dates will be announced soon. <laughs> we see my last question to you is, is if, if, you, if I give you a megaphone, and you have to shout out a message, a lesson, one of your top lessons that you learned that you know now, but you wish you knew that before, what would it be? Yeah. Oh man, that's a good question. Um, I guess like what it comes down to for me is just really simple and just like, yo, find someone younger than you and help them and mentor them and be in their corner. If you're in high school, find a junior, junior high kid. If you're in your twenties, find a high school kid and so on and so on. Um, and just always try to find someone younger than you that were, that you can see, you know, the younger version of yourself or what you wish you knew, um, and become that and be kind of in their corner. Uh, cause it can be hard when the only adults you are around when you're growing up are your teachers, which they kind of have a role of, you know, teaching you and then your parents, which kind of have a role for building you to be, you know, an adult. And so it's really hard to have someone in your corner that is just there to listen and kind of like sympathize, understand. And then, you know, yeah, just, I guess, become a mentor is like always been my goal. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Guys, knowing BC and when I was doing the research, even well before I was a part of Mastermind, it was such a humbling experience to see in him is in his element and the work that he is doing. It's such a treat to see him interacting with his little mentees and doing stuff. And not not little, they're like big uh, adults as well that he mentors. And such a fun equation. It is life-changing. As he said, you don't need to be a, an adult, like a, a, a senior to go and mentor someone. If you lead through heart, if you lead through intentionality, if you lead through a beautiful, beautiful vision that I want to serve, I want to help, you're going to do amazing. <laughs> Community is a huge aspect of our of our lives. Find your tribe. Go, probably check out Pursuing Purpose, Mastermind, come. It's a beautiful community here. Or build, build something by yourself where there is intention, there is heart-led people coming in. It has been an incredible journey just learning about BC and leaning into this community. My heart is full. My cup is brimming with joy and happiness. 
so thank you so much for inviting me in this community and thank you so much for saying yes to this podcast hey man we're honored to have you in our family and our community amit and you are one in seven billion special man your heart your 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 encouragement to people your the way you show up and share and then also listen is just like medicine man and so we're i mean we're obviously sad we're losing you to france <laughs> but uh i know france needs this kind of love and support and, and integrity as well so you're always welcome in the states man and and we wish to someday your your company sends you back here uh but until then man we're so honored to have you and thank you all for listening and to continue and support and encourage Amit and uh, you're a world changer man you're Thank incredible you so yeah dude Thank so many young Indian boys are going to look up to you and they already do and they're just going to continue to be inspired and motivated that if you made it that they can make it too man so 100% that's what I have learned just live your life and let people observe and take lessons and just by living a good life a lot of you're impacting a lot of people so find us Find us on Instagram, BC said his, BC Sarna, wherever you can, you'll find him. You can connect with me on Instagram. It's Amit underscore Spande. That's my handle. So once this episode comes out, do screenshot what what really touched you in this in this episode. Tag BC, tag me, and share those insights. Thank you so much, BC, and everyone out there. You were listening to Vishay knew that before. This is Amit Pande. See you next time. Yeah, baby. Good job.